Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from alloytutors.com and in this video we're going to look at the properties of halogens um, and obviously the halogens are found in group 7 of the periodic table. Now the properties we're going to look at are electronegativity, melting and boiling points, atomic size and we're going to look at bond enthalpies and the colour of the halogens as well as we go down the group. So we're going to start with bond enthalpies first um, and as you can see I've drawn a table on the board uh, and we've got our halogens which go down, they always go around as a pair, so we call them diatomic molecules, they never go around on their own. Um, and the bonds between each of the halogens, as you can see, gets weaker as we go down, as we go down the um, group 7, uh, with the uh, exception of fluorine, which I'll come on to in a minute. Now, the reason why is these are all uh, covalently bonded, uh, and basically a covalent bond is the um, attraction of the um, electrons that are being shared to the nucleus of the atom. Now, as we go further down the group, obviously the atom gets a lot bigger, gets a lot, lot larger, um, and that's what I've got over there with atomic size. Um, and it gets a lot larger because you have more shells. Um, now, what that means is effectively the attraction between the shared pair of electrons between the atoms and the nucleus in the middle is obviously a lot weaker. Um, and because that's weaker than um, the bond actually gets weaker as well as we go down. So it's all to do with the distance between the nucleus and shielding, and there's lots of shielding obviously as you go further down. Um, with the exception of fluorine, but actually, um, if it follows a trend, fluorine should have the strongest uh, covalent bond out of all of them, but actually fluorine is obviously a very, very small atom and it's got very little shielding, um, and you can see here, I've drawn the dot cross diagram to, um, to show what that's actually happening. So you can see here we've got the shared pair of electrons, very little shielding, so it should be quite strong. But actually, the atoms get that close to each other that um, you start and get some repulsion between the non-bonding pair of electrons. So I'll put that there, and we actually have some repulsion. Uh, now that's a little bit of an exception, and so just watch out for that, and uh, make sure you can explain that as well, because obviously electrons are negatively charged. Um, two negative charges close together will actually repel them further away. Um, so that's the slight exception there. In general, the colours as we go down the group, they get darker. Um, we start with fluorine, which is pale yellow. Uh, chlorine is a very pale green colour. Um, uh, iodine is like a browny orange colour, looks a little bit like rust. Uh, and iodine is a, um, is a dark grey uh, or almost black solid. Um, so, but obviously when you heat that, it actually turns purple, um, but just make sure you, you call it dark grey. Now, as I said before, the atomic size as we go down the group gets larger, um, so from fluorine th through to bromine, iodine, acetine, etc., um, these atoms get bigger, you've got more shells, um, so and that has actually um, a strong link with bond enthalpy as well, so make sure you can link these two together and you can explain what's happening. Um, just coming on to electronegativity. Now, um, definitions are obviously very important to help us to understand. And electronegativity is uh, basically the uh, ability of an atom to attract electrons towards itself, uh, and that's got to be in a covalent bond. So if we've got an atom here, now these are, imagine these were uh, bonded with a, another atom. So for example, hydrogen, uh, you get a lot of electronegativity there um, uh, between hydrogen and a, and a halogen. Um, and effectively what we're trying to do is measure how strong they are. Now, um, fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine, so what that means is that it will pull the electrons much more readily towards itself. Uh, now, the reason why it links in with um, atomic size actually up here. So, um, fluorine is a small atom, as we've seen up there, and um, it doesn't have much shielding, which means it doesn't have many um, electron shells between the nucleus and the um, shared pair of electrons uh, in the bond. Uh, and that means it's got a strong attraction um, between the shared pair of electrons and the nucleus. So because that attraction is really strong, um, you get a very strong, uh, obviously the electrons, sorry, are pulled closer towards the fluorine um, than towards the hydrogen. So that makes fluorine very electronegative, mainly because of the small size of the atom and the very little shielding that it has. If you compare that to something like iodine, which has a very large atomic radius, um, it has lots of shielding and the attractive forces between the um, electrons that have been shared in the bond and the uh, nucleus is obviously a lot weaker, so therefore iodine is not as electronegative as fluorine and so therefore the polarity in something like HI is a lot weaker compared to something like HF. 
Okay, I'm just coming on to the last thing, uh, which is melting and boiling points. Um, now, as we go down the group, uh, the melting and boiling point of halogens get bigger. Um, and the thing which governs melting and boiling points are intermolecular forces uh, in terms of simple covalent molecules like this. Um, and obviously, as we go down the group, the um, atomic mass uh, gets bigger. So astatine is the, is the heaviest of the halogens there. Um, and fluorine is the, is the lightest. So um, the larger the atom, uh, the more van der Waals forces you have. Uh, and that means you have stronger intermolecular forces between these molecules. Uh, and that's why the melting and boiling point increases. Um, now, just a, another thing as well is that, as you notice, I've put the state symbols on here as well. Uh, now, this is the state of these elements at room temperature, room pressure. Uh, fluorine and chlorine are both gases, low melting points, low boiling points. Um, so that means that they are gases at room temperature. But as we go down the group, the van der Waals increases and the uh, uh, boiling and melting points increase. So bromine's your liquid at room temperature, and then by the time you get to iodine and acetine, the van der Waals forces are so strong that actually these elements are solids at room temperature and pressure. So um, the volatility um, is the word that we use to describe uh, how readily something can turn into a gas. Um, now obviously as we go down the group, the volatility uh, decreases. So, um, but that's about it. Just make sure you can explain um, the properties as well in terms of shielding and um, atomic size plays a big part of this as well and make sure you can comment on trends such as melting and boiling points and colour as well but um, that's it, just a very quick intro hope it helps, bye